Greetings. We, are the Guardian. Welcome to Night Vision. I bought one of those put together pieces of furniture the other day, and took it home and proceeded to assemble the piece of junk. You know the type, they're made out of balsa wood and cork board. It seemed like a good deal at the time, a real bargain. But like they say, you get what you pay for. I guess I can't complain too much, because part of it was my own fault. As a typical male, I didn't read the instructions. It's a stupid little cabinet, how hard can it be? As it turns out, it can be quite the challenge, because many of the parts look identical. So I just did what seemed right in my own eyes. Unfortunately, half the panels were on backwards, and I didn't figure that out, until I was almost done. So yes, I succumbed to reading the instructions, and it was fairly smooth sailing after that. Many people are just like me, they don't like reading the instructions. We all think we're pretty handy, and we can figure it out on our own. The problem is, you're trying to build a life, not a cabinet. When you build your life without reading the instructions, you don't always get a do-over. Sometimes we make such poor life decisions, even God can't fix our mistakes. That's not to say that he can't make things better. He can heal any heart, and dry every tear. But he lives by the rules, so he can't let you go back in time, and erase the harsh words that you spoke. He cannot change the fact that you lost your temper, and did something that you now regret. That's why he gave us an instruction manual, the Bible. If you have one, you might want to get it out and read it. Not the whole thing, maybe just a page per day. You would be amazed the difference it makes. Instead of always having to dismantle your life and start over, God can help you build your life correctly the first time around. For a lot of people, they don't want to read the Bible, because they're afraid that the instructions are too hard. Either too hard to understand, or too hard to accomplish. That's kind of a cop-out, because you don't say that about anything else that's worthwhile. Sure there's a verse or two that may be a bit confusing, but you don't throw the baby out with the bath water. You read and embrace the 99% that's clear and concise, and ask questions about the 1% that you don't understand. But I think more people balk at the obedience issue. Lots of folks just don't want anyone telling them what to do, and that includes God. They like their cussing and smoking and drinking, thank you very much, and they simply have no desire to change. The reality is, they don't actually like those things, but they are addicted. They don't want to be a hypocrite, getting drunk on Saturday, then going to church on Sunday. So they get drunk on Saturday, and watch TV on Sunday. Pretending that everything is okay. I am not judging you. I am describing me. That was me, just a few years ago. I had friends that were Christians, and they were always inviting me to church. At the time, church seemed boring to me. Plus, my friends never had any fun, at least that's what I thought. They didn't drink, or smoke weed, or watch porn. That was my life, until I got a DUI. God used that as a wake-up call for me. One day I came home from one of my community service appointments, and saw my buddy's Bible laying there on the coffee table. Something just motivated me to pick it up. It was so very weird. The first time I actually held it in my hand, I felt some sort of fulfillment. It was like the first time I quit smoking. When I flushed those cigarettes down the toilet, I felt a release and a sense of accomplishment. But this was just from picking that Bible up, I hadn't even read it yet. So I started reading the Gospel of John, because that's what my friend had always suggested. The first couple of lines went right over my head. But I kept reading. The more I read, the more it made sense. Before I knew it, I had read the whole book of John. I was hooked. Actually, I was unhooked. Unhooked from my past, from all my mistakes, from all my failures. I dropped to my knees and cried out to God, and he graciously responded. No condemnation or punishment. 
My heart just sank, and I cried like a baby. I'm not talking about watery eyes, I cried like a freaking baby. I don't think I cried like that in my life. It was tears of joy and repentance. Crying because of the love that I was feeling, but also a kind of sorrow for waiting so long to come home. I, was the prodigal son. And just like the parable, my heavenly father did not scold me or judge me. He hugged me, and put a robe of righteousness on me, and put the family ring on my finger. And then we partied. No drugs or booze this time, we got high on the Holy Spirit. We were drinking the new wine, the wine of joy and peace and redemption. God didn't just soften my hard heart, he gave me a transplant. So, my friend, I tell you all that, to encourage you, to read the instruction manual of life. Read the word of God. Do what I did, start with the Gospel of John. Allow his word, to be a light on your path of life. Don't worry about following the rules. God will help you with that. Don't worry about what your friends might say. God will bring in some new friends, friends you can count on. Friends that will actually be there when you need them. Don't worry about any of the superficial things that you may have used as obstacles in the past. If you can't jump over a hurdle, just ask God to remove it. This is not religion, it's accepting God's offer to become a new person, and to walk in fellowship with your creator. No more balsa wood and cork board, this is the real thing. Peace be unto you and your house. Enter the race, and run to win.